We're out here on the last day, well, one of the last days of May and the Memorial Day on the 25th. And you can see that some of the daylilies are starting to bloom. There's a Stella Diora there in the East Garden. And then if we go slowly down here, we can see what they call a spider wart, which is a lavender flower. You can see I'll get a little bit closer there. And then I'm going to take you over. We're going to, I think we'll just walk slowly this way so you can see everything. We've got the buffalo grass, the blue buffalo grass that sits on either side of Emperor Ming that's coming up with these beautiful heads that look so beautiful when they blow in the breeze. The um, red twig dogwood is already coming back. You can see that it's throwing up shoots and it will be very nice by the actual um, midsummer or so. We have some more flags that are blooming. I showed you those earlier. And we're going to walk down the path here to Daddy's garden. See how his tomatoes and the blueberries are doing. And we'll also take a look at the grapes back here. So the blueberries, as you can see, are coming on really strong here. We're going to have a nice crop. And over here, Dad's tomatoes are doing nicely. I think they're doing okay. The raspberries are coming on strong and have quite a bit of fruit on the ends. And then if we look here, oh, I'm going to have to get out here and do some trimming. But if we look here, you can see the uh, actual growth of the um, grapes. I think you'll be able to see some of the ones that are forming in here and you can see them back up there toward the top of the grapes but all of this top area will have to come off because if you let it grow it just continues to grow leaves and all the energy goes into it rather than into the fruit so tomorrow I'll probably get out here and give it a haircut down to that first wire again and then the butterfly bush is doing really well here we're to the end of the peonies. You can see how fast those went. We had a beautiful, beautiful crop, and now they've pretty much bloomed their fill, and they're on their way out. I'll trim them back a little bit, and they'll be fine for next year. If we look that way, you can see that the mock orange is really coming into its own. So we always have a little something to look at in the garden. We're gonna walk around this way, We'll take a quick look down at the foot of Dad's corn bed here because the pinks are coming up. And pinks are like little bitty carnations. They're very, very, very fragrant. They come in a variety of colors. I have actually have pinks that are pink, but there also are red ones, there's purple ones, and they all smell very, very spicy. And we'll go on down this way a little bit. I don't know if you can hear Mr. Blue having a fit here, but he's saying that I'm kind of in the way of things, I think. And we can see that the very first daylilies are beginning to bloom. These are old homestead daylilies, these orange ones that you can see there in the background. Let me see if I can get back that way so we can look at it close. But they are, oh, I have to go over the cliff here to do it but I think I can get it. These actually came from around the base of an old homestead that was on, down on Stark. And after they deserted the property, the house was going to ruin, Kathleen and I just actually took our shovels and we went down there because all of these were underneath big, huge fir trees. So obviously they were planted years and years and years ago because no one would plant a daylily that loves sunshine underneath big huge fir trees but I have three bunches of these one here one across over behind the pond which there's also one blooming there or coming just close to it and then uh, I also have some in the East Garden and then there's these lovely little love in the mist they're called whoops sorry I didn't mean to joshle you there but this is a 
a really interesting little bush. And if you can see the pods on it, when they um, finish blooming, they get these seed pods on them that have a ton of little infinitesimal seeds. But they're beautiful and very interesting pods. They look almost alien. They're purple with little fine hairs around them. And that's what the flower looks like. So, and then also the Campanula over here is starting to bloom. Let's show you that. This is the one that's going to hang all over this walkway. Let me back up here so you can see. It's all underneath my window there. And it'll be solid pink blooms when all of that blooms there with some really vibrant red behind it, which is the actual um, Lucifer Crocosmias. Okay, so let's go this way a little bit and see what else we can find. I was just kind of looking out the window this morning and there was the mock orange. And it was like the mock orange that took over Gresham here. So it's going in a major way. Dad just filled the pond up a little bit. We can hear it as we pass by. If I'm quiet, that is. And look what's happening to the Mexican feather grass. Remember, it was that ugly brown stuff. And look what it's turned into. This really lightweight feathery that blows in the breeze. It's just really attractive. It used to be one of Mom's favorite grasses. And you can see, we'll get up really close here, and we'll see if it'll give you some detail. But it's very, very lightweight. It's really, really soft. And all of those are naturally seeds, and they're gonna blow all over. But the nice thing about them is they have really shallow roots. I mean, that plant itself, even though it's big, if I grabbed a hold of it with my gloved hand, it'd come up with pieces of it. And um, I'm gonna pan this way again to show you the grasses that are growing behind the pond. We've got a zebra grass, and then we've got another grass, and I honestly can't remember the name of it, but look at the size of the corkscrew willow. It has grown probably a foot just in the time that I've been away for the three days to the bed and breakfast. Okay, so we'll go on this way. The columbines are out doing themselves this year. I've never known them to last this long before, but they are really doing a nice job. And I need to get out here and get the wisteria under control. You can see its big tendrils are reaching out there trying to decide where to go. So I will wrap it around and give it some direction so that it'll, it'll be nice and full and head over there toward the um, feeder for the squirrels. Let's go this way. Oh, just gorgeous, gorgeous bunch of columbines. Look at all of those. There's even some, here's some new ones here. I don't think we saw the white one before. Maybe we did, I can't remember. But this purple one here. And look, this one's so big it fell over, but it's got a, it's got a bee working it. And that's the, the traditional Oregon. Um, columbine, that one that's yellow with the big long orange spurs on it. Um, I think that other than that, oh, okay, we'll show you these. These are hardy geraniums. They come back every year. They're a delicate, nice little flower. The bees love them, as you can see. He's got himself buried in there. Um, the nice thing about these are also that they're really easy to pull out if you get too many of them around. For instance, there's one over this direction that's in the middle of the Crocosmias here, and I will more than likely pull that puppy out because the Crocosmias need some room. We got the honeysuckle that's coming on with its blooms, and it will smell really, really nice. 